Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In this series of videos, we are going to learn all the core concepts of Python programming language. So before that, let's understand what is Python and the benefits of learning that language. So Python is a general purpose programming language. Python is an interpreted programming language. Python is an object oriented and high level programming language. Now, what is the meaning of general purpose programming language? General purpose programming language means that it can be used for a wide variety of software development tasks, which means that if it's a domain specific language like your JavaScript or HTML, CSS, you are using it for one specific purpose that is web development. But a general purpose language like Python can be used for a range of tasks. Say, for example, popular web application frameworks like the Django web application and Flask are written in Python. Desktop application like the Dropbox client is written in Python. Python has been given top preference for data science and machine learning. So this one reason for this might be because of its popular, uh, because of the popular Python libraries like NumPy, SkyPy, SymPy. TensorFlow, Pandas, etc. So Python is also excellent uh, programming language for data analysis. You can write shell scripts, sorry, you can write system scripts in Python for uh, interacting with the operating system. And uh, you can also use Python for communicating over the network sockets. So current version of Python is 3.10.5. We, we simply call it as Python 3. And any recent version of Python can be downloaded from the Python Software Foundation website, which is nothing but python.org. Python is also an interpreted programming language, which means that uh, Python program code has to be run using the Python interpreter. So every line of Python code is uh, made to pass through the Python interpreter, which will convert it into machine language code during runtime. So debugging becomes easier in Python programming language. Python is an object oriented programming language, meaning that it makes use of dynamic semantics and Python variables or objects. Python is a high level programming language, meaning that it is it would be simpler for a human being to understand the Python programming language code. Say, for example, if you use a if you are going to work with a low level language like a C or C++, then you need to detail, you need to have a detailed thorough understanding of how a computer works. But with a high level language, many of these uh, uh, details, machine level details are abstracted from the user. Say for example, in Python, uh, let's say I already have a list which contains three integers, 30, 40 and 50, and I just want to append one more integer 60 to the list. I just say list dot, I just give the list name, dot append, I call the append function and then I pass 60 to the append function. So this would simply append this integer 60 to the already existing list, but it is not so simpler in the case of languages like C or C++. So that is about the basics of the Python language. Now that you know the benefits of learning Python, next step is to know how to download and install Python. Any version of Python can be downloaded from Python Software Foundation website, which is nothing but python.org. So just go to python.org, go to download section. So here you have the download section and uh, you can download the installer of the latest release of Python. Once the setup is downloaded, make sure to add Python to your path during the installation process. You can see from here that the latest version of Python is 3.10.5. And um, once it is installed, go to start menu and search for Python folder. So here I'm going to the start menu and here I can see the Python folder. So here I, you can see the Python folder installed. There are multiple ways to work with Python. One is the Python command line, also called as the Python shell. So this is the Python shell, and this is called as idle, which is Python's integrated development environment. So I click on the Python shell now. So you could see a welcome message, and as well as you could, you could also see three angle brackets here, which indicates the interactive environment. So this three angle brackets are also called as the prompt through which the programmer gives the instructions and the Python interpreter comes up with the result. 
So this is called Python command line or the Python shell. This is good enough to experiment or explore, but the drawback is we cannot save the statements for further use or future use, and we have to retype all of the statements to rerun them. So let's explore some commands in this Python shell or the Python command line. We can type any Python expression or statement or any Python command after this prompt and Python will immediately respond with the output for it. Say for example, I just type I just type a print statement followed by a string within the print command and it just prints the output for you. I give an expression within the print command and it prints out the result for result of 5 plus 2 in the Python command line. I can also give an expression for evaluation like this. So it prints out the result of 2 into 40 divided by 4 as 20.0. So instead of one statement, I can also give a sequence of instructions executed through the interpreter. Say, for example, you can give an assignment statement like this. X is equal to 3, Y is equal to 199. And then I can say Z is equal to X plus Y. And then I can say print z it prints out the result resultant value of z which is x plus y that is 3 plus 199 as 202 i can also give iteration statements through the prompt like So this triple dots indicates that this is an iteration statement. So some more statements are ex expected. I press the enter key one more time and then I get the result here. So here I use the range function. This range function starts from zero, increments by one every time and continues up to the specified number. So here the specified number is 10. So it starts from zero and continues up to nine. And within the print command, I have given print x comma x cube. That is, it prints the value of x as well as it prints the cube of the value of x. So it prints zero and the cube of zero is zero. It prints one and the cube of one is one. It prints two and the cube of two is eight and so on. It prints up to nine. And some things which you have to remember here is two assignments cannot be done in a single line. Say for example, I give A is equal to four, B is equal to nine. So here I'm trying to do two assignment statements in a single line and it gives me a syntax error. And another thing is result cannot be a tuple of three values. Say for example, I give A is equal to four, B is equal to 112. I say A into two plus B. And then I say, a into 2 comma b slash 10 comma c is equal to a plus b so here i have three values and i'm trying to produce a result as a tuple of three values here and it gives me a syntax error so from this you can understand that the result cannot be a tuple of three values but the result can be a tuple of two values like this I can just give A is equal to 4, B is equal to 8, and then I can say A into 2, comma B plus 5, B plus 6. So here it successfully produces the result for me. So from this, you can understand that the result can be a tuple of two values, but the result cannot be a tuple of three values. Some more things to remember is hash is used to represent single line command, comment in Python. And Python is a case-sensitive programming language. 
The other way to create, debug, and execute a Python program is by using IDLE, which is Python's integrated development environment. We can move to Python's IDLE environment by using the start menu. So here you can see the start menu from all programs option. This is your Python command line and this is your Python's IDLE. Now I click on IDLE. So this is the Python's IDLE environment. Using this Python's IDLE environment, you can uh, save, you can create, debug, and execute your Python code in interactive mode. You can write your Python code as a function or script, save it, and then use it for future reference. So here you can see the file menu. So you can create a new file by uh, pressing Control N or by clicking on new file. You can open existing Python programs by clicking the open option. And then you can save your file by pressing the Control S or Control Shift S or Alt Shift S options. You also have the edit menu where you can do cut, copy, paste and find and replace tasks. You have the debugger, you have the debug menu with the debugger options, and then you have the options menu wherein you can configure your idle environment. That is, you can change the font size, etc. And once you open a new file, once you type in your Python code as a new function or script by opening a new file, you can also run your Python code from there. So, so just explore, let us explore these options. I click on file, new file. So this has opened an untitled window for us. Here you can use the file new window for creating a new script file. Here you can write your Python code as a function or script and then save it by pressing Control S. Yes. And you can execute this Python code in interactive mode by using the run option. So here you can see the run option or by pressing directly F5, you can execute your Python code. So let's type in a simple program in this uh, in this untitled uh, window and then execute it. I'm trying to get two numbers as input from the user. And then print the sum of those two numbers. Herein I have used the print function wherein it will add up the values of the variables X and Y and then print the result. So here I have used a function called as input function. This input function accepts all data as string or characters only, but not as numbers. So in case if I enter a numerical value, the input value should be explicitly converted into numeric data type. So for that, I have used the int function here. You can see the int function here. This int function will convert the string data as integer data explicitly, and then it will do the manipulation. And then finally, the print function will print the sum for you. So well, now that I have entered the Python code, I can save my file, and then I can click on the run option to run my Python script. So uh, directly, if I click on the run module option, it will ask me to save the source code. I click on OK. So Python, all Python program files have names which end with .py option. So now I save my file. Now that my file has been saved and it has run now, it's asking me to enter number one. It has got the two inputs from the user, two numbers from the user, and it has added up by using the print function and the sum is also printed on the screen. 
So one thing to remember is Python statements do not end with a semicolon and all Python program files have names which end with .py. And another important thing to remember is lack of proper indentation is a problem in Python. So that is how you use the Python idle environment as well as the Python command line, which is also called as a Python shell. Hope this video is useful for you. See you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.